Hello and welcome to our uh, eight Tour de Tools. Um, our Tour de Tools session is where uh, me and Gauthier, uh, my co-host, test tools ourselves or invite uh, very interesting guests and discuss a bit the merits of the tool, uh, ask ourselves questions. Um, today, uh, well, before I give the word to Gauthier to <laughs> introduce our next guest, maybe just a small note on our jingle. We now have a fully AI-generated jingle it's a, it's a snippet from uh, the, our submission to the AI Song Contest 2021. So pretty soon we will announce our uh, official submission and then please vote for it. Voilà, Gauthier, over you to, to you to introduce uh, someone very interesting. Yeah, so uh, so today we're uh, welcoming Jean Pedro, also called GP for uh, people that don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, so he is the CTO and uh, co-founder of Visu, uh, which was uh, officially uh, started in 2016, but apparently a bit earlier than that. Uh, apparently came out of an hackathon. So uh, let, let's see about that um, and how it turned out. And then uh, he's calling us from Switzerland. Uh, he is originally from Brazil with a more technical background as a computer science and AI. And his vision is to change the way people interact with data to democratize its access. So let's talk about Visu. <laughs> um, and for that, I will, uh, I will let uh, yeah. hey. do the talking. So, thank you for, for introducing. I, I really like the song. The jingle is great. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to vote on that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, yeah, my name is JP, uh, João Pedro. I'm originally from Brazil. I'm one of the co-founders of, of Visu and uh, just Shortly, what Vizu is about is uh, we want to allow um, people to access information by just asking questions in natural language, right? Uh, we believe that uh, questions are the most natural way for people to request for information, and uh, so we're we're tackling this challenge, and we have uh, we're focusing really on non-technical users and uh, still allowing them to go very deep on on the data. Uh, we're located in, in Switzerland. We have uh, customers. In the, in the Dach region, uh, thousands of users, and uh, they're using uh, Vizu asking daily thousands of questions. So it's a very exciting time for us. Before, uh, because I think you have a demo to show today, like before we jump on yes. the demo, like you, you mentioned this came out of a hackathon. Like what kind of a hackathon allowed you to see like we need, we need to build this? Um, so uh, yeah, we came out of a hackathon. That was, that was um, early 2015. I'm a huge fan of hackathons. I, I really like to just yeah spend uh, some. It was 24 hours. It was a rather short one, but we 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 sit there and then we we were given like a data set uh, payment transactions, and then we were asked, hey, you know, uh, we would like to see how how tourists are spending their money in Switzerland, uh, and you know, they were like, how are Americans spending the money? Who spends the most money with jewelry? And then we thought, okay, instead of trying to build some kind of dashboard out of it. What if you could just ask, right? So what if you just type a question and suddenly something comes up? And in 24 hours, we got a little Python uh, <laughs> prototype up and running, wow. and uh, we were one of the winners. Uh, we got some thousand francs uh, in our pockets, and that was our starting capital. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Really cool. and, and so you're the target user. You're saying you're this non-technical user. Is, is this what we today a bit call the, the citizen data scientist? Yeah, so I mean, you know, citizen data science. Yeah, that, that's a. I think that's a very um, uh, interesting term, and then uh, there's a lot of discussion about you know, can yeah, citizens right. become data scientists? Uh, so I wouldn't even go so far as calling them data scientists, but I think that uh, business people. So we're, we're you know B two B here. Uh, uh, we we believe that they can. They have a lot of questions that they're asking, and if you if you look at the questions, there are a lot of them that you can make a system be able to answer them. And, and that's our goal, right? We, we won't be able to answer all of the crazy questions that there are and do some predictions and all these kind of stuff, uh, but we can help uh, and we are helping uh, business people become more data-driven, uh, not just pure instinct. Uh, yeah. 
It's a very inter interesting set of, really curious to see it because like today, I think for a lot of organizations, like people that want to ask a question about their own data, they need to ask a data department and then they need yeah. to wait until the data department has time to, okay. to give a report to them. So I'm uh, yeah. really curious to see how you will, how you uh, tackle this. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I usually call this uh, the, the curiosity packs, yeah. right, that are inside companies. Whenever you have some kind of question, you go to the reporting department, uh, maybe, you know, this data bread line to wait for your answer and so on. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, whenever you guys are ready, uh, I can start showing uh, the product. I think yeah. that's the most that's interesting. Jim, floor is yours. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So let's see if the sharing, we haven't tested this sharing, but uh, let's do this. Okay, can you guys see it? Yes, we can see it. Good morning. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so this is the first time I do this demo. This is something uh, we've been cooking up uh, here in our office uh, uh, prior to our product hunt uh, launch. So yeah. we we scrape some data. Uh, it's not going to be like the data for commercial users, of course, but um, basically all the product hunt posts uh, ever, um, you know, which topics they're in, uh, the votes count, reviews rate. I think it's very interesting um, which days of the of the week and so on. So we're going to be exploring this data today with Vizu to really see how how we plan to change the way people interact with data. Right, so that's how Bizu looks like. Um, so, you know, you agree that there's a first a dashboard here that I created just by asking questions again. I just asked them and added them here. Uh, you see the, the main part of the interface is the is the natural language part here that, you know, that you can ask your question. I'm gonna go quickly to the, to the data set and the knowledge graph. Uh, this is like a semantic representation of your data. So you have, uh, so, we don't we don't copy your data. We connect directly to your SQL, okay. but we kind of try to simplify the the schema. We don't talk about columns and tables and things like that. We just just concepts and how they are related. So you see here a post, uh, post is done by a hunter, has Twitter username, register date, uh, some more information about the post and the topics, and so on. Right, and this, is, and this is generated automatically. Yes, this is generated automatically, but we allow you to change it with okay. Studio. Yeah. So I'll show you afterwards. Yeah, so you can add synonyms, you can add more concepts, and we'll, we'll do some of these things today here. Cool. So, uh, yeah, so we have here 172,800 posts. Uh, you know, we can see the average here of a votes count, the posts, reviews rating, and so on. It's uh, just a quick overview. So you know, we don't we don't think you know Vizu doesn't want to kill dashboards, right? Mm -hmm. We just think uh, we think that the dashboards they're super important in capturing the most important parts of your of data, your KPIs and things like that. We think that companies usually they overuse the concept of dashboards and reports, and every kind of question becomes a report. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 they end up rotting, right? So people then you know need to recreate it, and they don't know if it can trust it. So the idea is instead of focusing on building reports, that you focus on curating data, right? Where you're um, you know you're you're adding definitions to, to the, you're explaining the metrics, you are uh, adding more relevant data step by step, and you're helping the system understand the questions, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, let's start with some questions. So some, you know, there are some suggestions here. I'm just going to click on one. So number of posts monthly. These are also automatically generated. Okay, there are a lot of years. So maybe let's take a look in one timeline. You can change visualization. So you see here, uh, you know, not necessarily we have all the data from product and we're still checking on that. But uh, we see here there's a pattern, uh, you know, how, how it's progressing across time. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see the data, we can always get this sidebar here. Uh, so I see that uh, posts, they have a certain topic to it. So maybe let's take a look at, well, you can follow up on it and you can just you know, drill down on it or you can filter it further. I'm just going to say uh, only for crypto. I guess, yeah. I guess that's the big it's, topic. It's really like 
from the moment you ask your initial question, the second one becomes like a follow-up question to that initial one. Like it's yeah. a filter on the on the first one. Exactly. I mean, if you if you just ask question normally here, uh, it you know can be a new uh, point of of start. But if you click on this button, you're saying, "Hey, I want to drill. I'm going to go further on this one." Right. Uh, and and we believe also, you know, this the the this, this, the chat interface that is history where you can just scroll up. Uh, you know, I come from a more data science background, so notebooks, right? Python notebooks, they have this, you know, view. And I think it's it's a great kind of um, of way for you to explore data. You know, you want to maybe go back and you want to, okay, no, actually, I don't, I don't want this one. I want to follow up on this further and, and go down. So it, it allows you to go back and forth and see what were your analysis so far. So yeah, here with crypto, you can see, uh, well, in 2018, when we were really at the peak here, and now, you know, you could even say we're, we haven't reached the top yet <laughs> because uh, product hunt posts, uh, we haven't uh, reached yet the, what it was before for crypto. Um, yeah, and, and maybe now you can just say, well, let's see, compare with uh, analytics. So yeah, I, here I, I didn't click on the follow-up. So you know, we should try also to recognize if, if you actually mean a follow-up question. If it isn't, you can still remove it. But so now show me a table. It's not really what I want. I want to see it in a plot like this. So you can see the analytics. Uh, stayed relatively constant, but yeah, crypto really went crazy. Now maybe an, uh, not everything needs to be a question, right? You we're also adding ways for you to interact with it because you know, they're, maybe they're more intuitive. So I can just <clears throat> let me add another one here. Is a big one, no code. So let's see how this how it's doing. So you see, no code is mostly nothing, and now it's starting to pick up, right? New trends coming up. Um, really, really interesting. This uh, this uh, dynamic. Yeah, this, this this data set is really interesting, and 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 that's the thing. I think this, you know, you ask a question, and you're like already wondering what what's the next thing I'm going to ask, and that's and that's what Visu is about. It's about this exploration. Right. So maybe let's just continue further. See some different kinds of plots. So number of posts. Um, oops. Per topic. Let's compare 2020 versus 2018. So you see the topics here. I'm just gonna jump to my favorite one. I like a scatter chart sometimes. So here you have one access to 2020 post, like how many for each topic. So you can see there, these are the new guys, right? So apparently marketing is doing better this uh, 2020 versus 2000. 18 user experience. On the other hand, crypto. Well, 2018 was really booming, and 2020 was not yet. So, so G GP, um, it's just that we already have a few questions in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, so a question from Mark. Mark, <laughs> not gonna try to pronounce the name. Um, so, reports for everything. What's the difference with Tableau? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the difference with Tableau? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I guess it's a very valid question, right? Tableau is the biggest in the market for BI. Yeah, you can ask this question for every kind of uh, BI report. Uh, uh, the idea here, also, Tableau has an ask data. You know, they introduced that. Uh, you can try it live. Uh, you know, just go on the website, look for ask data, and you can try with some Airbnb data. The thing about natural language is that uh, if it's not easy enough, if it's not natural enough for you to, to try it out, um, people will not use it, right? Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't answer your questions correctly, you will, you will just uh, give up on it and, and, and go back to the, the rest. And uh, we actually have customers that actually have Tableau and they've tried as data. And in parallel to that, they decided also to go with Vizu exactly because they thought for our salespeople, as data is still too complicated. Still too technical. Okay. <clears throat> sure, maybe scatter chart is a bit technical for you know, <laughs> but you still can get a lot of uh, you know, like uh, complicated questions uh, answered. So our focus is really on the natural language understanding. So it's not really like just you know build reports, uh, you know create dashboards, great visualizations, and, and and change the color here and there. It's really about getting information. Focus on on the questions that are asked. So I would say that's the main differentiation. And and how far like. Can imagine this is not easy to build the MLP uh, processing. Like, like, how far can you take this? How detailed questions? So, uh, there are probably questions that 
you can ask that there is no good answer to or not built uh -huh. in. Uh, yeah, I mean for sure. Uh, we, we you know we're making always uh, step by step, step by step uh, on the like uh, you know, the most important kinds of questions. Um, so for instance, I one that is you know people you think that it's kind of stupid like why why would people ask just like what is the best in this case here what is the best weekday right mm -hmm. the best weekday. So in these cases, people still expect to see something, right? So you know, we, we do look into the data to, to find some some default behavior there, what what we should show. So in this case, apparently the the weekday with the highest average votes count, uh, so Wednesday. Um, there are things like, yeah, there's this one. About, I think this one is an interesting one. It's really the, like percentage of uh, posts. Which I which I would like to quickly show in combination with Studio. Um, so if you hang up, hang on a second, we can we can we can go a bit on more complicated kind of questions. Yeah, sure. All right. So yeah. So next to it, we have the the Visual Studio, which allows you to configure, uh, you know, your, so user management and all this stuff, right? Add more data. Uh, so. The, the approach that we took is it's a bit similar to Looker in one sense that everything you do on the knowledge graph it's actually as code uh, so it's a SQL like um, um, code so when we were working to make it you know simpler to for this is for the technical user the, the, the data team right uh, we believe that yeah uh, you, you want to have version control you want to have these you know, clearly, I, I'm not a huge fan of having to use a lot of, uh, especially for definitions and things like that. So, so you can see here posts. Uh, you know, these are basically the dimensions like you would have in Looker. So we have the comments count created at, right? Uh, so created at is a date. Um, it's it's actually the granularity of time. This is the SQL to it. And so on. So we have here feature date. So feature date for a post is when it appeared on the first page of product. And so it's an important event. So let's say we want to define something like uh, whether a, a post was featured or not. Right? We have the feature date. So if it's not no, we can say it's it was featured. So we can just say okay, let's define a relation was featured. Um, we're gonna give it. Oops, name in English is gonna be. Featured, yeah. Um, it's, this is it's a many to one. It's just the, the the cardinality of it. Every post has one information about that. Uh, it's a boolean, and I'm gonna define the SQL. So we're iterating on this uh, the syntax so that it's. Now also less boilerplate code and a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what you're now doing, this, is, this allows you to, to let's say, add to your knowledge graph a concept that was not automatically discovered. Exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna, just going to define, hey, I want to use the feature that uh, if it's not null or not, to define if, uh, right, I'm going to save it. Um, great, so now I can ask, for instance, Let's say percentage of featured. You see already it appears on autocomplete of uh, featured uh, posts. Uh, let's say per topic. So, okay. So basically, now we're looking at for each topic, what is the percentage of them that is actually featured? Right. Mm -hmm. So I just defined featured, and you know now we can just ask this, this kind of question. So you see here that uh, among the femtech topic, apparently ninety five percent of the posts uh, end up featured. And like okay, maybe there are not so many. Okay, so let's check how many femtech uh, posts. Okay, there's still sixty eight. Vizu answers your question and it shows you additional information which you may be interested in, mm -hmm. right? So probably the list. Uh, you can click here and let's you can, you know, jump to product count. Um, you can see here the votes count. Maybe we can see 
also let's see um, average uh, votes count um, let's see if for featured um, femtech posts stick with me so on average the ones that are featured they get 180 upvotes so people saying hey i like this spot right which is yeah it's a good uh, maybe we can compare it to analytics just so we have comparison to it so in the, both together is 306 but divided you see for analytics you know you need to get a lot of upvotes there to end up being featured uh you know some topics maybe that you don't need so many you can just ask again so which topic has the lowest average votes count for featured posts so will there always be an outcome or, or will there be cases where, where you will say like i don't know what to do with your question yeah, exactly. So let's say, I don't know. Uh, you know, you, you could ask like very stupid things. Uh, you know, what is the age of Obama, Barack Obama, or something like that? It will try to make the best out of it. Sometimes it, it may say, hey, I don't know what to mean, with Barack Obama. Um, other times, if you have, in this case here, I think we have the, a description. So many times it will just look it into the description. So maybe if you say, show me all Bitcoin uh, posts. I mean, let's say Dogecoin. It's definitely not a. It's definitely not a topic, right? So in this case, it it recognized that Dogecoin is something important. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really know what to do with it, and then what it does is say, okay, well, I'll just take a look at the description of the post and look for That's Dogecoin. Right. So you see here, Dogemeter. These are the best Dogecoin posts, apparently. So yeah, you know these kind of situations. Uh, that's how we handle it. Um, we and and you can capture all of this, right? So people are asking. That I think this is a big differentiation as well. The way people interact with Yuzu is over by saying exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. So a user that is looking for information is expressing himself, uh, and it's it's if you get the same user in a different tool where you have a drag and drop. And if you would analyze it, the usage, it would just be going around and, okay, where is this? Maybe try. And we okay. just says it. So the data team now has access to exactly what people are asking for, which concepts Visu didn't understand. And they can use this, and they're using this today to prioritize which data to add to, add to the system. And so, it's also actually yeah, it's a completely different use case to understand, like, what, what is relevant data? What, what are the things that people are Exactly. So it's not just like top down, hey, I think this data is interesting. It's like really seeing, okay, what are people asking about that we don't have currently in the data? That's cool. Yeah. So we, we have another question in the chat, which uh, we already had before. Um, because you, you So you showed a bit the, the studio, and I guess this is also where you can add data. And one of the question is, what kind of data, like what kind of backend do you support? Like how do you connect to, to people's data? Uh, I don't know if it's yeah. maybe afterwards in your demo, but then we can just wait for that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so it's just as an example here, these are the data sources we currently support. It's SQL based, right? So yeah. we, we everything that is SQL, we can directly support. Maybe it's not here, but we can easily add it. Um, yeah, also, if you, sorry, one second. So here, when you have a question, let's take this one, for instance. So zombie games, mm -hmm. so the one with the. You can always, if you're a technical user, you can always check the SQL. Sometimes it's a good thing. And can you edit the SQL? You know, can you can. For example, that in here, uh, there is something I'm not really happy with uh, that I could change, for example? Yeah, no, uh, not really. I mean, what we, we, what we are improving on is really to edit the filters here so mm -hmm. that you can say, oh, no, I, I didn't mean votes count. I'm going to, oh, yeah, that's, that's something okay. for You could change stuff, or I don't want the featured ones. You can remove it. But we cannot currently um, edit the SQL right away. Right. And, and so, is there, let's say, if I would ask a question that, that Visu doesn't really know how to visualize, um, mm -hmm. difficult for me to uh, <laughs> think of that. So let, let's say you, you had this graph uh, with the posts per month since mm -hmm. uh, 
thousand. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. So, so, could we, for example, say here, uh, please compare all Januarys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something so like that's that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Let's compare all Januarys. Yeah, I think yeah. That's that's what we do best. I don't know. Uh, yeah, in this case, it just took the, the generates. But yeah, so that's something that uh, yeah, so didn't understand. And so it's something here, that here my question would be like, like, is there still a way for the non-technical user to help Fizu and to say, okay, this and this, or this would be the filters that you just mentioned? Or? Yeah. So for I mean, for this one, we need to have the possibility for you to to do the mark. What I what I can show you, I mean, if you're a technical user and you're kind of um, so for a technical user, and you've seen some kinds of limitations of mm -hmm. Visual, for instance, um, currently, it's going to get a bit more technical, but uh, let's, let's go. For yeah, it. Sure. <laughs> so cool. let's say currently, you know, Visu doesn't, um, doesn't have a, like a median uh, implemented, right? So we can uh, add a computation here. Okay. So it's, I have Postgres behind the scenes. So just give me a second just to check. Uh, I don't know. My heart. Okay, um, you can actually write the SQL then to calculate. I probably already checked. Yeah, so I'm just gonna quickly cover. Sorry. Yeah, the percentile is this guy here. Yeah, okay. So I can just uh, quickly add. So this guy takes, uh, it could take a double or integer as the first, it returns a double, that's fine. Um, it returns, it takes actually not just a single number, but like a series of a number. And I can add a SQL select. I'm gonna change this guy to the first argument and uh, just yeah, there's some documentation to it, but <laughs> just to this is what's going to be shown to the user, right? Median of the first argument. So okay, let's see if it works. And, and the the studio part is it? This is typically something that is managed by someone more technical and. Exactly. This was created like this. Now the median is a new feature that the business user can then. Actually using their exactly. Program. So now I can just say median votes count per topic. Let's see if it works. If I mess something in. Oh yeah, median of votes count per topic. So sketch has 188. You can check the SQL again. So yeah, there you have the stuff yeah. that we just okay. defined. Right. So yeah, even if you get some you know limitations, you can easily build on top of it. And we're trying to make this also more. Like it's, it takes a, some things next step, like what, what Looker does. You can define things, but now you can also define functions on top of other things. So it's very compositional. Okay. How do you, because you, you just mentioned, uh, like if you build this, it's for everyone. Like what does, what does the sharing feature looks like in Visu? Like how do you, because this is meant for multiple people. So let's say I found something interesting. Like can I share this easily with somebody uh, from business? Like what's the... Yeah, so for instance, I created this this dashboard uh, here. Mm -hmm. I can go and can share it. I can share it a specific role or user to everyone. Okay. Uh, there are some possibilities here of what you can do with the information. Another cool thing that I like about the dashboard is, so we, we started with this ad, answering questions. Then we thought, okay, well, we want to have also like a little dashboard. Sometimes it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but really our focus is on the ad hoc exploration. But anyway, uh, so we created, I created this number of posts, average votes count and so on. And now I want to apply filters on top of everything. So I can just use natural language here as well. I could say, I don't know, 2000 versus 2001 um, to date so that it doesn't compare to the, to the whole year. So let's yeah. see what happens. And now the whole dashboard changes, right? So oh, now we have... Cool. 10,000, 11,000, so it dropped by minus seven on the average votes count period since this year's Wednesday is the day, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, top 10 posts as well. So yeah, we, we're exploring all these different ways of interacting with information using natural language. Right? 
And, and I see on the left side the, the concept of boards. So, so like, is, is a dashboard a board? Is that how yeah, it's exactly, like? exactly. Yeah, it's a dashboard a board. I can just say, I want to add this one. So um, let's say this one. I'm going to add it to this one, or I can add a new board. So let's say this is uh, parts board. And can you can you share specific questions that you that you made? So let's say I, I, I do like one question, a follow up, a follow up, and a follow up. Can I just yeah. say this third follow up? I would like to share this with somebody. Yeah. So currently you can either do this well. You have to do it over the board, or okay. what you can also do. But that's still we we're, we're we're still improving the UI for that, <laughs> so that's not so hidden. But you can just you know create a URL. Okay. Uh, which share allows that. you then to share that, and then when you open it, it already asks the question. Maybe before I, I keep, so that we have a few questions. Um, <laughs> okay. Some yeah. of them are NLP related. Some of them are more uh, data support related. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Dolin is asking, mm -hmm. where did you get the data uh, to train your NLP model? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So about that. Um, so Visu, Visu uses, uh, so the core of Visu really the understanding of the questions. Uh, we built it by ourselves. Uh, of course, we use other libraries for specific NLP problems, also for the machine learning um, model. We're not reinventing everything. Um, so, um, you know, we use Spacey uh, for post of speech, Duckling for recognizing time expressions. They're really good um, and also extensible. And we have also contributed back. Um, so this, they already have trained models for that. Now, for the understanding, uh, you know, that is something that we are generating by ourselves. Right? We have uh, every question that is asked of Zoo that we, you know, we can create a training data out of it by saying, hey, this question goes with this way of understanding the question, this logical form, that's how we call it, uh, this SQL, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And every question from whatever data set is used to train so questions that you're asking, like we, that we added for product hunt, uh, will help our insurance use because language. There's a lot of things that you can, you know, generalize from that. Right. Do you? Th does it also mean that stuff that people ask that you can't answer? You basically you log it and then you try to to catch on to it. Uh, we definitely. So we 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 have you know uh, since it's a machine learning model, it has a confidence on the answer. There are also some other heuristics that we use to also detect. If the question was not answered correctly, um, and you know, with 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 the customer that we have with their approval, uh, we use that as well to you know further improve the system mm -hmm. um, to um, answer the questions better. Some things are you know that it's not in the data or there is a missing definition for it, uh, but some things maybe Visual screwed up and didn't didn't catch the right one. Okay. Maybe a, bit of a technical question on machine learning models. So, so you mentioned mm -hmm. before we started that you also support other languages. Like, do you build specific models for this language, or do you translate everything to English? Uh, no. So actually, basically, the language ended up being. Um, I mean, so again, so the, the the Spacey and Duckling, these guys also have their trained or models for each language, which we use, right? Okay. So, but our machine learning model itself. Basically, the language is a feature, so that we can also learn across language. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so uh, when we add a new language, it already works out of the box, basically. And then, you know, we need to add more training data to capture a bit more nuances. And, and what languages do you support today? So uh, German, English, French, and Italian. It's, okay. it's Switzerland, after all. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> so I just, I just actually figured out that I kind of asked the same question as Murillo. Uh, which was a uh, wait. How do you retrain fine tune? I mean, how do you collect data to retrain and fine tune? So we already answered exactly. that. Yeah. Um, another question from NCLS, uh, which is mm -hmm. Nico. Um, so Nico is asking, will you do you plan on having Presto support? Because I think this mm -hmm. questions, as far as I can tell, comes a bit from. Uh, so we do a lot of data engineering, for example, yes. and we see a lot of people on data lakes, and basically, like Presto is like a SQL interface on top of your. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, your data and the question is yep. will you support this mm -hmm. that's the, it's something that uh, you know we, we you know I, I'm a big fan of presto um, um, we currently don't support but it's SQL yeah right um, so it's something that is in our timeline of course we can 
know, it, from the current customers, it was not something that came up very often. Um, and but it's something that we have on, on our eye and there. And uh, you know, if there, if you, Nico, for instance, have a, a cool case with it, I know just uh, reach reach out to me and uh, let's let's talk and we can easily implement it. Yeah, it makes sense to, to develop these uh, the support from the moment that you actually need it. Exactly. Yeah. There is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe a follow up question on that. Like, uh, do you like because you you said like you contributed back? Like, is it also an idea for you to have like kind of community driven connectors? So I can imagine that somebody which is really into Presto, for example, could just develop like a thin layer to to interact. Like, is this something you're looking at, or is everything? Um, I mean, def definitely, uh, um, you know, that's something that uh, our dream, right? <laughs> you know, building a, a cool community. I think the, the nice thing about Knowledge Graph being also more like code, and as I showed you, you know, just implementing Medium there, yeah, you know, we, we could see like more of these things or standard connectors for specific database. That, for instance, if you have a DBT uh, model, like from DBT Hub, that you have then the, the matching Knowledge Graph for it. Uh, so these are all things that we have in our minds. Is uh, fo current focus is really on improving the user experience and getting more customers on board. But long term, you know, it would be great to to be able to have these things like just open source and to say, hey, and GitHub, let's let's have this thin layer in my knowledge graph, and mm -hmm. maybe it already knows some concept about insurance, or maybe it already knows some concepts about something else. But yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Okay, great. I can keep asking questions, sir. Huh? <laughs> um, well, okay. So something you mentioned during, I think it was in the studio, you mentioned uh, some Git integration because I, I wonder how you do, let's say as a more technical user, I, I'm somebody that also likes a lot to be able to version everything. Um, yeah. Like, how does this work in Visu? Like, let's say I make a change and then somebody sees, ah, Gautier, this is just a mistake uh, because you didn't yeah. get it right. Yeah. And to fix it, or they at least want to know who made that mistake. Like, I'll blame mm -hmm. but understanding yeah, yeah. where the, the issue comes from. You want the point? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it's something it's something you do often, right? Like you 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 want to see where it went wrong, basically. Um, yeah. So you know, so Studio is a, is a very recent development that we we added exactly for for the cloud users that we you know we just started with with the cloud version before we were really focused on large corporates. Um, and uh, and on premise and these kind of stuff. So we start adding Studio and and Git support here. Um, so everything is being version controlled. And currently we're using, you know, uh, uh, a, a Git repo that is on our side. The idea and you know also it's, you know, there are some things you can do synchronize Git with the master, but it's currently not yet available for people to easily go back and have the the Git on their side. But that's planned, right? So yeah. that's that's the, the idea of that you, so. you mentioned the, the cloud version so that means that there is also an on-prem version yes <laughs> yeah i mean so we have uh, access our, our biggest customer uh public okay. um and uh well insurance highly regulated uh, space uh data you know very important that it stays uh you know securely in in their premises because that's yeah Anyway, so for these kinds of customers, we have uh, on-premise uh, okay. deployment, but we encourage you know customers in general to get our cloud version, right? Yeah. It's less hassle, but it's for a specific type of corporate customers. You can't exactly can't do without. <laughs> exactly, it's a bit more expensive, of course, but the... <laughs> and how does it like? Let's say you need to build this, like you need to deploy this on-premise. Like, what does it look like? Like, who takes care of what? Because I guess, like for example, you you need behind the hood like a full setup like a database and all of these like how do you what, yeah so is more um, I need to do this what, what do I need to, yeah. mm -hmm. to do so or, our our uh you know our whole infrastructure is it, it's all Kubernetes uh, Helm charts um on premise uh, we we usually you know work a lot with OpenShift uh, you know there is it's very easy to to then you know have another customer if it if, given that they have also an open shift yeah. uh, cluster but um yeah so we can reuse a lot of stuff that we also have for the cloud but of course we're a bit more limited right there right can imagine okay if for the cloud version like is it possible today to have uh, that let's say a large customer has their own tenant where you still have this bit of isolation but you you still manage everything for them 
Yeah, so so in the cloud, it's a multi-tenant environment. Um, okay. We um, we have IP whitelisting. We have single sign-on as well uh, for the cloud. Um, currently, we don't have a separate tenant for for large customers in the cloud, right? But we, we ensure that now we have uh, you know good prices, best security, and and yeah. everything can offer it so that it you know it uh, yeah. So that's still a, a good environment for it to, to work with. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. So a few questions coming from the chat. Um, so Ricardo is asking, do you support other visualizations than uh, charts and graphs? For example, maps. Yeah, there isn't some maps. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I don't have in this data set, but uh, yeah, I have a lot of uh, data sets here. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's my weekend thing, you know. I, I, yeah, the other day, I, I just downloaded all the expenses from Brazilian uh, Congress. So you, you have all of this as open data. And I was just like seeing how our politicians are expo uh, <laughs> spending our money. So yeah, so maps here. So in this case, uh, you can say, I don't know if you know customers. I don't know if this is the right demo, though, because we have. Yeah, so for instance, in this one, um, let's see. So we also have some other visualizations here. If you have latitude and longitude, you know, you can see the customers. Uh, you can also, let's take this one, just the ones from Kia Zurich. Just also interesting for, for um, yeah, if for insurance, well, maybe not with COVID, <laughs> but uh, usually the, they want to see where the customers are so they can also plan their uh, where they're going, see customers that are nearby. So I can see here, right? Uh, is it automatically detected like that? Like uh, in this data, that there's latitude and longitude. So a map makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Exactly. That's the that's the idea. You also we also have a specific. Uh, so how many let's see cancellations for Canton? So we have also some other kinds of plots. So, well, here we have instead of states, we have cantons. So in this case, we have the map of that. But we also have for the a world map. And it's easy to add new new uh, maps. We are using high maps, uh, high charts and high maps behind the scenes. So they have, uh, yeah, and it's pretty, it's a very standard kind of, uh, so the, even for more custom kind of maps, you can add if you have the, the um, yeah, the polygons and stuff. Here, um, a question from again from Nico. Uh, so Nico is asking, can you join tables? Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this one is actually joining. Sorry. Yeah. So you see here, it's joining over customers and transactions. So do we join here? So you know, also when we when we import, uh, maybe I could show this. But we don't have so much time. But anyway, when when we import, even if you don't have foreign key constraints mm -hmm. set, or you have an Excel sheet and with multiple worksheets, uh, we try to detect using some statistical approach to to see okay which which uh, columns go together, and then you can join across them. And if you didn't get it correctly, you can still over the studio define them. You can say hey, right. this yeah. one I can join with that one, and so on. Okay. So, yeah. What is your uh, short-term roadmap, feature-wise? Are there things that are really like mm -hmm. a priority for you to uh, to develop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we're working a lot on also like editing the the answers, right? So that you don't always need to to ask questions for it because there's some situations where it can get highly ambiguous if you, you know and. Um, so we have identified some things that we want to improve just by clicking here. You can already do certain things, but for instance, you know, changing the dates, for instance, that's, you know, should be easy, easier than currently yeah. is. Uh, so that's, that's something from the UX side, uh, from studio side, you know, we're improving there also our syntax, uh, we're making it easier for, for, um, that's less boilerplate. It's easier to define metrics. Um, and you know we, we're more, we're making improvements on that. And on the natural language side, that's something also that we are constantly uh, bringing forward uh, with you know 
um, currently questions regarding like growth or cumulative sum and these kind of things. Um, you know, you 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 cannot you still have to define uh, for a specific metric the growth, right? Um, but if you actually want to have growth in general, that's something we're looking into or um, understanding a bit more these nuances with, um, for instance, you know, s s more, um, especially for segmentations from customers. You, you want to see how many customers have uh, two orders and in Brazil versus um, uh, are in Germany and have uh, more than 10 orders, which you kind of want to group by these uh, different cases, right? So we also want to provide uh, you know, more understanding in that set. So natural language is really our focus and we're looking at the, the questions that are being asked to prioritize uh, these kind of... Uh, Interesting. And I think like you say, like you need to still specify some metrics, but that is of course, if I understand correctly, also because all computation is done on the database. You're not doing the computation mm -hmm. yourself, right? Exactly. So, um, Yes, yeah, so all the competition is done on the database. You know, we always try to push it as much as possible to the database because it's also in the control from the from you know the client side or the need to. And yeah, and also, I mean, we're big also big fans of, of DBT, right? Uh, I think it's a great tool. Uh, we're part of their community there, and i you know we we also try to look exactly at the things that make sense for you to do on Vizu. And not that we are basically doing the same things as DBT is because you know if I would whenever I talk to a customer and I say okay this maybe this thing you should do actually on the database layer yeah. you want to make it accessible for other applications as well but of course you know metric definitions you know this you cannot you know just simply do because you you need to aggregate by different things and group by on the fly so these things you will need to do in Visu. I think there your your uh, like bit what you presented initially or your statement about that uh, data curation still is important and you, like, should be one of the focuses and that you can mm -hmm. ask questions is, is super relevant because like exploration is good, but you don't want to do exploration to define important KPIs for a company. Mm -hmm. exactly. Everybody exactly. will have a different definition of that, of that KPI and exactly. that you want to have curators. Exactly. So it's, it, we're really trying to match these two. We, when I have, we want to give the best kind of environment for the data team to define things, right? Mm -hmm. While at the same time giving the easy way of exploration for the not okay. good user. Okay. So, so something else I, I was wondering about and links a bit to the to the last question of Nico about joining tables. Um, mm -hmm. Is it today possible, like if if you have uh, data and different types of data sources? to in one way or another join them. Let's say my customer data is in, uh, I forgot what, like, let's say Snowflake, I saw Snowflake, and my uh, my order data is is in another database. Is it, is it possible in, that, in any way to combine those today? Yeah. Or so to first prepared a data, a combined data set? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if on a theoretical, you know, it's just, I mean, w one way you could do this, I mean, maybe you, you go when you, you go with, with Presto, right? Where you, you 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 define you know you make these data sources available for Presto, Presto and then we use Presto to access different ones. The thing is also uh, that's a bit of a you know personal philosophy. We also don't want customers to just be combining every kind of uh, you know Google Sheets with. Uh, I, I I'm a bit skeptical about that because I think self service BI. Um, you know, self-service should really be more focused on access information than about, um, you know, create like having all these ad hoc data combinations, right? I yeah. think in this sense, I would prefer and I always advise customers to do things more data warehouse, get it, uh, ETL systems and things like that. Because otherwise it can really get a, a, a mess, right? Mm -hmm. You have different versions of it. I, I see the value of it, right? And, and it's cool to experiment. And, and also we allow you to quickly put an Excel sheet and, and try things out. But for productive use. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a concern that should not be in Visual. Like it's a concern that yeah. should be in the data exactly. storage layer. That's, just, that's what you're saying. Yeah, in our opinion, it, it should be yeah. more there. I mean, we, we need to focus on certain challenges. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. makes sense because that also means that like if it's in the data storage layer, it's still accessible to everything and not only exactly. to. Exactly, exactly. 
I get that. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I need yeah, yeah. uh, uh, Sorry. Did, did you want to show something again or? Yeah, it's just that I found this this really cool insight, and I just wanted to share it. Here. <laughs> it was for for me for me it was super intuitive. I just need to just copy it over. Um, yeah, I was taking a look at the length of taglines. You know, maybe you're building a startup and you're gonna put it on uh, on product hunt as well. And um, and you're wondering like, uh, so I'm just defining length of tagline as the length of the tagline, of course. It's gonna edit here. Um, and and actually the for me it was like super intuitive. Like, what would you expect? Like, how long should the tagline be? You know. I, like to, if it's too long or it's too short, what is the best? Oh, that's a good question. I, don't know. I would say yes. I would say probably short. Like a lot of yeah. people lose attention. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's, that's one also one I found. So I'm just take a look at the average bolt count for length of tagline. It actually goes up, right? Wow. So, <laughs> so actually, you know, the the longer your tagline it seems that uh, the the better your your average there. Uh, While well, you could also take a look at the number of uh, posts there, for instance, or you can also see why for specific, maybe just for featured ones that we defined as well. Also, it seems to go up. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just I thought it was kind of with a tagline of a page. You must become successful. Yeah, I mean, there must be some kind of limit there, I guess. <laughs> Otherwise, I would just put a whole. Uh... <laughs> but uh, yeah. and and something something I didn't see before is like here you have a line. Like, do you is this something you do just by default? You always try to to fit this on the on the yeah it, it, this linear is something regression, from, or do you? Yeah, this is uh, from high charts. Yeah, some high charts they they you know you have possibility to add it. Though we thought it was always interesting to have it by default, but you can. Just uh, take it out if you don't want it. But it's a basically it's just a linear regression. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it's not it's not that I could uh, fit something a bit more curvy in there, for example. No, no, no. And if people want, I, I see there's a export to Excel button, which for of course the, that's the, the type of audience that we're talking about, like if they want to do their own stuff, this will be probably be their main uh, utility that that they will use. Yeah. So you can export it here. I mean. In this case, it's maybe not. But yeah, uh, yeah, you know how they say, right? Uh, the export button is always the most uh, requested BI feature. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, if you, you can export everything that you want. Um, and if you have some kind of analysis that you want to do on Excel for whatever reason, you can also do it there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Clear. How can, uh, if someone is interested, can they? Trial it on your website? Yes, yeah. actually. So if you go on our website, it's a 30 day trial. I looked at that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So start your free trial. It's it's a 14 day. I mean, it's it's a 14 day, right? I mean, you know, it, it's there. If you're using it, we allow you to just continue using it. You know, we, we'll, we'll, we're, we're, uh, people usually need more time than that. Well, so, of course, like, you need to stimulate people to use it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, but you can go here, uh, right? Sign up and um, yeah, simple. And then you 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 can just uh, you know start already adding your your data, an Excel sheet, or we have the demos, right? We can you, product hunt will be one of these demos that you can just try it out and. Um, so well, what are the different pricing plans? How do they look like? Yeah. So pricing. So here we're we're really talking about like internal use. Uh, we are now exploring a lot of uh, of embedded cases because mm -hmm. you know I think especially for products it's quite interesting to. Oops, there's something wrong with our website. <laughs> this is uh, the curse of the demo. Eh? Yeah, that is good to know. <laughs> Okay, there's, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're exploring also the embedded case, but in, in, in case uh, here you have uh, like a standard uh, plan, professional enterprise, um, you know, this is pricing per user, very standard, uh, different, two different uh, kinds, uh, viewer and the creator, creator has, can create dashboards, can 
um, also use Studio and so on, viewer can ask questions and interact with dashboards. They cannot create dashboards. Right? Okay. So it's really, yeah. So and there are different kinds of feature apparently. Yeah. Maybe a, yeah, language support. A question on the on the let's say the user feature. So you mentioned you integrate uh, with SSO. So like I guess I can easily plug in a, like an AD or. A... Yeah, so we work with, well, currently SAML is the one that we are supporting. I mean, if you have a different one, then we are open to talk about it. But yeah, you can configure your uh, you know, IDP, um, put the metadata in there and yeah. And then another question related to this is I, because I can imagine like in a lot, like I actually, we actually see this, like in a lot of companies, people are, especially now with GDPR, people are defining uh, data that people can and cannot access. Like how do you? Mm -hmm. Is this something that you that we can do also in Visu or like like mm -hmm. that you can integrate with or? Yeah. So yeah, we have a role based uh, access control. So uh, we can define roles for users. Uh, you can uh, also for the knowledge graph, which knowledge graphs uh, which yeah. users can see, um, and for the roles, you can even you know you. Even in the inside the knowledge graph itself, you can say, okay, these users can see, these roles can see this metric, this one can see this uh, class. It's it's very flexible. Okay, yeah. and uh, because most most companies that do this usually already have a system to do it. Uh, I'm I'm talking about, for example about something like a Ranger. Uh, if we talk about more data lake, like is mm -hmm. are you integrated with such systems or is it really the, like your own uh, role access? Group? So. Um, this is something I mean that we're definitely interested in uh, because yeah, you know, we also that's not you know it's a burden <laughs> to mm -hmm. have to do all this stuff. So um, with 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 you know, some of our clients, um, they handle it directly on the database uh, layer, uh, which is way better, right? We just get from the single sign-on the sum. Uh, we use that to authenticate the user okay, against so the database and that that's, to query the database. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, so it's, it makes everything way way easier for us. And uh, if you can do this, then you know, <laughs> please do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, we have uh, ways to do it. Yeah, but, thanks a bit uh, again to the, to the comment about uh, curating mm -hmm. your data. Exactly. Sure, make sure exactly. that there's the correct access rights on your data. Exactly. exactly. And, and centralized, right? You know, we prefer things to be in one place you know, for other applications as well. Yeah. OK, here. OK, very interesting. I exhausted my question. <laughs> I was going to check it out. In the in the chat, no, nothing new in the chat. Okay, we. I think uh, that's it for me. I, I think it's clear, JP. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Thank you. So if people want to reach to you or like, yeah. So um, email is jp at visu .com. That's uh, mm -hmm. easy uh, to write. Otherwise, you know, just go on a website. Uh, you can reach out from from us uh, there. Uh, sign up for a trial if you want to have a good conversation. You know, just book a call with us there. You'll find everything on the website. Follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, and uh, yeah, and keep. Oh, and uh, soon we'll have the product hunt uh, demo live uh, with the launch. I think it's going to be very interesting and very curious about uh, how what people are going to ask. And with a very long tagline. <laughs> with a very long tagline. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do you do you also because uh, i just wonder like is there like do because you plan on maybe building a community or something do you are there other channels like do you have for example a slack or a, a discord yes. or something else we should uh, yeah. we can reach to you mm -hmm. so currently um you know so we use slack uh our slack is not yet like publicly available but uh our current customers they are already in in our shared uh channels uh, once you know the idea is then that we have an, an open uh, Slack, everyone can join and uh, ask questions there. Yeah, probably going with Slack instead of uh, Discord, but uh, yeah. yeah, of course. And and do you have yeah. maybe that, that's my last question about contacts like uh, maybe a newsletter, or something like if I want to get a regular mm -hmm. update on the new features that you get? Uh, yes, so there's also a newsletter. Um, currently, well, I need to we need to check exactly how to. <laughs> to get uh, to, the, to the news, yeah, I think probably if you if you sub if you go to Vizu to create an account, you know, we we'll reach back to you and okay. yeah, you can get okay. the newsletter. Everybody to uh, Vizu.com and create an account. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like description. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. We'll make sure to include everything in the description as well. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> nice. Thanks a lot, uh, JP. No, thank you guys for the opportunity to present Vizu here and the interesting discussion. It's very interesting. And yep. uh, we'll see everybody uh, next time. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.